I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear The thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Hello and a warm welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. I don't know why Kate Middleton's Mother's Day photo has been doctored. Chances are Kate wasn't available to shoot the real thing and she wasn't available because she wasn't happy. And because someone needed a happy photo, voila, one was made. One was contrived, photoshopped and likely not by Kate herself. We should also note that the last photo of Kate at the time of writing is a fake photo. Let me say that again. The last photo apparently showing a happy Kate within a happy family is apparently not a true or real representation. Interestingly, Kate isn't wearing her uh, wedding ring or engagement ring in this particular image. Now, what this seems to suggest is that not just one, but several messages were being conveyed by the image simultaneously. Perhaps that Kate is okay, but also maybe not okay within the marriage. I don't know. Do you agree that few people seem to have any difficulty seeing or believing the edits in the now infamous fake Mother's Day photo? A photo Kate has since admitted to altering and a photo that has received the kill order from numerous media agencies. In the same way and using the same standards, we can ask legitimate questions about Madeleine McCann's last photo, released guess when? On May the 26th, remember Madeline went missing on May 3rd. It took 23 days, more than three long weeks after the incident for her last photo to finally see the light of day. In some versions of this photo, such as this screen grab from a video shot inside the McCann's villa in 2007, Madeline is sitting by herself. Some media released images also show Madeline apparently by herself. Which one is the real photo? Which one is manipulated? And yet it's impossible to closely crop an image of Madeline without a piece of Jerry McCann's elbow sticking into the side of the image or her sister's sleeve and arm. Now, I've done a very close study of this. I'm not sure if anyone has done a closer study than I have. I've written five books on the case and I've written two blogs that exhaustively study this particular aspect. I'll put a link to that in the description. But before we get to the rest of this analysis, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you're finding this analysis interesting, worthwhile, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. So do you agree that one of the two images of Madeline by the pool is fake? Either Madeline is sitting with her family, laughing, or she's sitting by herself laughing. Now, I know what you're thinking. For privacy reasons, Madeline isn't shown with a sibling, and there isn't a real intention to mislead after all. Except there's a lot more intrigue around this photo than meets the eye. If this was the last photo of Madeline, it kind of gets a unusual importance, right? And you would think that the last photo would also be the best photo the McCann's could have given to the authorities. And so why is it that this photo took so long to see the light of day? Was it because it was being edited? Was it because there weren't any family photos? Or was it for some other reason? Or was it a combination of these factors? And so this photo was, this photo was initially provided to authorities. Not Madeline on holiday, but a younger, darker-haired Madeline And this is the photo that first went onto flyers. Very different to the Madeline at the swimming pool, don't you agree? Now, by the time other holidaymakers had left prior, British holidaymakers, updated photos from the McCann's holiday were finally released. The theme in many of these images was of a miserable-looking Madeline standing on her own, such as in this image. And that image also 
had different permutations. It's hard to say whether this image has been intentionally darkened, perhaps to make the ghost blonde hair appear browner than it really is. Another photo, better cropped, emerged later, which, if anything, is lightened too much. Now, one can imagine there were dozens of holiday snaps, so why were only a small handful of not terribly clear images ever released? For example, it's quite difficult to get hold of images from the holiday where Madeleine isn't wearing a hat. Clearly, when she was allegedly spotted being carried towards the coast, she wasn't wearing a hat either, and thus her hair, its length and colour, are perhaps the most important identifiable elements. Incidentally, extracts from not one but two of the witness reports highlight exactly this point, that in the one instance the girl's face wasn't visible because of the way she was being carried, but her hair was, and in the other instance her hair and hair colour were clearly visible. In one of the reports, she was seen to be a child of normal build. She had blonde hair of medium shade, not very light. Her skin was white, typically British. Then in the other, the child was female because she had straight long hair to the neck. The color was fair to light brown. But this brings us back to the original question. Which one of the two images is fake? Madeline sitting alone by the pool or Madeline sitting beside her family? The answer seems to be the latter. There are a bunch of iffy parts of the pool photo that don't look right, and if you're not sure, you can compare it to the analysis of Kate Middleton's photo. It's especially hair that looks a little bit dodgy and a little bit fuzzy. And so what you will notice is the lack of any shadow around Jerry or Madeline, as well as the fuzzy, out-of-focus rocks in the area bordering Madeline's hair, below the point of Jerry's elbow, and then also on the opposite side of her face where her sun hat curves upwards and besides her hair. Jerry's hand also seems to create no shadow under it, as, this, uh, as his head does on his shirt on the pool tiles below his hand. The image is also cropped quite high, cutting off almost all of Madeline's legs. Now, the point of the photo is to show Madeline at the pool, and yet you can barely even see the pool. If the photo is fake, then this would be the hardest part of all to coordinate. Legs in water, in sunshine, perhaps at different times of day. In the image purported to be the last photo of Madeline, no one in the photo looks like they've been on a beach holiday for a week, least of all Madeline herself. What does this have to do with Kate Middleton, you may ask? Well, is it really such a big mystery? Recent headlines say it all. Kate Middleton's fake photo fiasco proves the secret of royals must come clean. Also, the Kate Middleton photo that was too good to be true, that's from the New Yorker, and then from Al, the pressure to be perfect. If the last photo of Madeline is fake, and if family members were deliberately moved into the image to create a warm and fuzzy, cohesive portrait, but false portrait, It's not so hard to imagine why that was necessary. The McCanns at the time were under suspicion, if not being investigated outright, and one of the issues that was being looked at was neglect. Leaving their young children to eat dinner somewhere else provided a very different picture to the pool photo. And we know there was also talk of one or two children crying late in the night and asking, where were you when someone was crying? And so the question is, can manipulated pictures tell a different story to the real story? Can manipulated pictures trump the real story? One aspect that is a little puzzling is that there are zero photos, real or faked, of Kate McCann with Madeline during their final holiday together. In the case of Kate Middleton, there is a justifiable reason to suspect something is wrong, something perhaps quite serious in order to go to the trouble to make up a photo rather than to simply take one or use a recent snap from their archive. Why is the same not the case with the McCanns? The secret message in fake photos is what? Well, desperation. The desperation to look perfect in an imperfect world. The despair involved in selling a too-good-to-be-true story 
to people who demand a story that is perhaps different from reality. Because, and why do you need to sell a too good to be true story? Well, it's perhaps because the story itself can't sell itself, and so it needs a little help. I'm not going to take it further than that. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.